Forest colour has long been one of those useful extras that makes Forest Pack such a powerful tool. But one of its limitations was that it only worked when an object was in Forest Pack. So, from version 7 onwards, this limitation has been removed, and many of the features of Forest Colour can now be used even once items have been converted to standard Max instances. For example, in this demo scene, Forest Colour is being used to tint the grass using a texture mapped to the surface's UVs. Here's a with and without render of that feature. In Forest Pack 6, if we converted this object to instances and hit render, we'd lose the tinting feature. In Forest Pack 7 though, this is no longer the case. The tint information is saved to the instance and can be accessed by Forest Colour. Rendering once instantiated yields the same results as though it was still a Forest Pack object. This allows a Forest Pro user to share an instantiated version with someone, and as long as they had the free Forest Lite version installed, the tinting would still work just fine. Perhaps a bigger change is that Forest Colour also works whether geometry originated in Forest Pack or not. You can use all of Forest Pack's randomising tint by object modes on any geometry, including its ability to randomly sample colours from a map. For example, here's a bunch of crayons. They're standard instances, they weren't scattered with Forest Pack. So now to randomise them, I could enter a load of colour values in a multi-map or something similar, but it's going to be much faster if I could just sample the colours from a texture. So here I have a photo of some crayon colours. I'm going to wire this to the Forest Colour Shader's Colour Tint Map input then change the mode to get colour from map and turn on check random values. In this mode, a random pixel is chosen from the texture and is used to tint whatever's in the map section above. You also have several transfer modes. And if, as in this case, you don't have any bitmaps and you wish simply to use a solid colour, you can change the blending mode to normal. Now, if you hit render, that's it. The colours randomly selected from the maps are being used to shade the crayons. With this release, Forest Colour, even in the light version, becomes even more powerful. And Forest Pack 7 is available now. You can find out more about all the new features on the i2 software website.